I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lectern, will give us the meat of the request. Once they have presented the request, there will probably be discussions and or questions from board members to staff. Once we're satisfied we understand that part of the case, then we will ask if there's anyone here in support. If the applicant is here, would like to come give us some information, that's fine. If you're satisfied with what's been presented, that's fine. If there are multiple people here in support, we would like to know that you're here. We would ask that if you have something to bring for, to us pertaining to the case that has not been brought to us, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record, and give us the information you'd like for us to take under consideration. Once that has been given to us, there is probably going to be questions or discussions among board members or back to the uh, applicant. I will then ask if there are any persons here in opposition or if there are any persons here that have questions about what is being requested. If there is any uh, questions or uh, opposition, please come to the lectern, give us your name and address for the record and give us the information that you'd like to for us to take on your file. Normally we do act on cases here today, however it is in the bylaws. If we feel like information is lacking or parties need to work something out, we can postpone for roughly 30 days until the next regular schedule meeting. Okay, after saying that, uh, Ms. Holly, I have letter from Williams or email that says they are requesting tape. Yes, sir. Okay, if you are here in reference to city case application 2015-01, Williams Electric Service and Signs, that case will not be heard today. It is being postponed until next month. Could I get a motion to accept the applicant's request? So moved. I have a motion for Ms. Gaston to second. Second, Ms. Hobby, all in favor, raise your hand, please. Unanimous, thank you very much. Again, if you are here for the Williams case, we will not be doing anything on that case. Okay, first case that we will call is Lowndes County case, VAR 2015-02, Robert Goodwin, 6881 Wise Baker Road, South. Ms. Carmella, you have the show. Yes, if you, I'm sorry, if you have not signed in on the back, please sign in so we have a record of your presence. Good afternoon, everyone. The first case before you today is a merits request to our design standards for single-family homes. The applicant has applied for a building permit for a home for his daughter, and at the time um, that he made his inquiry, we informed him of the regulations um, in this case, the R, um, R1 zoning, stay on the board, apologize for that. The R1 zoning allows for homes to be of a certain size, uh, roof pitch, exterior siding, etc. Um, the applicant has found a home um, that he would like to purchase or have purchased for his daughter, but it doesn't meet our design standards. Um, Property is located in a rural residential area, large lot. There's a mixture of housing types. There are double wide, site built homes, single wide in the area. The property that's highlighted in the yellow, the applicant owns both properties. In 2006, um, the applicant submitted a survey to our office to combine both of those lots into one. Um, but he would like to separate them out uh, again. Um, and that's a requirement because the R1 zoning only allows for a home and like a guest house. And on the applicant's property where he lives, which is the smaller piece, there's already his home and a single wide book home. So in order to work with him, we advise him to separate the properties as you see it. Um, the only change will be is that the property is landlocked. He would have to do some type of dog bed. Um, to get to the property or have or meet our access requirements. And we need <coughs> approval based on him doing a survey and being approved to that. Okay, and not to cut you off, but going back to what you're talking about, if he comes in there and
cuts a flag lot, so to speak, out and down to the road. The county's okay with that, and it would leave enough frontage on both lots to accommodate that, and the county would be satisfied. Right. Okay. Um, if you all went out to the property, you would notice that home is there. Applicant was in a situation where he needed to get the house off the lot where he, he purchased it from when he went in and moved it. I informed him that at the time he applied for a building permit, permit office, probably charged him double the permit fee because it was down without a permit. Um, so, I'm sure I had any questions. Anyone have any questions at this time? According to the information, this is going to be a house for daughter and children. Yes, sir. Okay. And the applicant is here in the store. Right. I think that's who it was. Okay. By separating this back to two pieces of property, he can, by right, put this mobile home there if it were a double lot. That's He's just needing the variance because it's a single lot. questions discussions thank you Carmel would either of you care to give us any additional information or are you satisfied what's been presented is accurate yeah, um, we had it re uh, re uh, sir. if you would please come to the lectern give me your name and address for the record But it was, it was surveyed like that in 2006, and the 
taxes, they've never been changed. They've been charging me double tax on two separate properties ever since. Not for just one. One means like it was torn. Like it was all put together and torn. Well, that would be something you'd have to take up with the tax. They have the oral people. That's, that's beyond our scope. All right, yeah. Okay, so anything else you would like to add to this? It's, it's exactly as she presented it, it's what yeah. you want to do. Does anyone have any questions, discussions for the property owner at this time? Is there anyone here in opposition to this request, or is there anyone here has questions about what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office, Carmel? No. Any other questions, discussion, ladies and gentlemen? Can we entertain a motion on this request? I make a motion to that we approve. There it is. Second. As requested. As requested. Okay. Uh, Signing. D. Okay. Have motion. Alvarado to grant the request as presented, and I'm assuming that's with the stipulations that staff has put in. That's exactly correct. Exactly with the stipulations staff had in it, citing criteria D. I have a second from Laverne with it. I have a second from Laverne Gaston. All in favor, please raise a hand. Good now, good luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next case that we will hear is VAR 2015-03 for Pickens Motors, 4140 North Valdosta Road. Uh, our next request is also a variance request to our non-conforming standards. In this case, Mr. Pickens has a sign that he would like to make some modifications to. The sign is legal but non-conforming. The non-conforming in this case is that the UOTC now requires you to have one standing sign per street frontage. And as you can see, um, it has two signs. One representative the Volkswagen dealership and the Subaru. Ms. Pickens would like to take the Subaru sign, relocate it a little further west of this property, and instead of going with the two poles, he wants to go with it a single to that particular sign due to the franchise and regulations. Staff didn't have a concern with this and recommended approval. Um, we didn't see him do anything that would just be an adverse effect on adjacent properties. So other than the fact that it's two signs, it means height square foot is required. Yes. Okay. Any other questions, discussions from the board? Yes, I did inquire with our utilities department. Um, I think Mr. Pitt is just doing it as a favor to the county. It doesn't the county require him to do, um, but he's trying to get it out of the way before the board signs. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Mr. Pipkins, would you have, have anything you'd like to add? or Nothing other than. Um, the main reason we're moving it is because of the, I'm, looking, looking up here. I'm David Pippen. The main reason we're moving it is because the manufacturer requires us to have a one place sign now. And that uh, sewage is not going to be too cold in the line, so we couldn't put it there. And I put it that sign. So we got it. And we put it down to the other end. It's going to be the same size square footage inside the sign itself. Any questions, any discussions for Mr. Pippen? Thank you, sir. Is anyone else here in support? Is anyone here in opposition? Does anyone have a question, please clarification on what is being requested? Was there any contact to your office, Carmella? Yes, sir. Mr. Minshew, Gary Minshew called and said he was fine with the request. He owns the property adjacent to this property. He's okay with it. Okay. Any other discussions, questions from the board at this time? I'd like to make a motion to approve. Go 
ahead and make the motion. I make a motion to approve the variance with the stipulation that all recommended changes. Second. Modification to request by the panel for the county would be. I have motion on the floor from Mr. Alvarado to accept the variance as presented with the modifications and stipulations that are quoted in the paperwork from the county office. Sign criteria D. Cited criteria D. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Gaston. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it, gentlemen. Okay, uh, that appears to be pretty much the balance of the meeting. We are postponing the Williams Electric Service. Uh, we have approval of the minutes. Anybody yeah. have any? Just, just before you vote, let me clarify. I had some technical issues with this last set of minutes of Mr. Dinkins' last name. So there were only a couple of errors in the minutes that you received in your package through email, the revised version, with the only changes being his name, spelled correctly, laying for language reception. Can I get a motion to accept the minutes? Motion. I have a motion from Mr. McCall, second. Second. I have a second from Ms. Hobby, she beats me. <laughs> I'm just going to I'm going to the turkey. <laughs> All in favor, accept this minute. Raise a hand. Thank you very much. Uh, any other business we need to talk about? New business, old business? Yes, um, on the city's website for the Zoning Board of Appeals site, it still has Scott Ornstein as the vice chair. Okay, we can get that. Oh my God. So, so and, say, whose name needs to be up there instead of? And the <laughs> agenda for today's meeting was not on the site this morning. It was like at lunchtime, but this morning it wasn't there. A little sooner would be better. You do realize that we don't control that. I do that know that you don't control okay. that directly, but. We will um, pass that information along. Thank you. Thank you. The pictures with Scotty. Remember we took a group photo? They want to see a copy of the photo. Okay, I've got copies on my computer. I can email them. Cool. Well, and and Mr. Laverne, can you ever watch the City Media Channel or whatever the City Channel is? Um, it might be on there. Oh, those are pretty interesting little programs that they have. Have you seen it? So I mean, I haven't seen that. I, I haven't seen that particular one, but I watched one about the fire. Okay. Any other new business, old business? Anything we need to talk about? Matt, Matt. Matt, looks like you have something cooking. Well, we all do. Um, there is training coming up in April, April the 14th. Um, this is planning and zoning training. It's planning and zoning 101. And then on the April 15th, the next day is 201. Um, and for Zoning Board of Appeals, I would recommend the 101 training. I think the 201 is more for planning commission members. Um, but the 101 is there, it's in this room. And I think there's actually some money left in the city's budget to cover training for a few of you, at least the city appointees who want to go. I don't know about the county, I think there's some money there. The beauty is this is training that normally we would have to travel to some distant part of the state and pay travel expenses. And we are catching them as they are passing through South Georgia. They are stopping here and we don't have to pay travel. Okay, and the dates again? Tuesday, April 14th. And 15th. And 15th. And we've got forms. I think Marilyn had brought some of these. Um, I've got old ones. She's got the point. new ones. Okay. I got um, the form. But if, for all the county appointees, if you would give your form to me so I can do the requisition in the county. Right. You said we don't need the 15th, we only need to do the 14th? I would do the 14th. Um, the 15th is like more than the advanced class. The 101 is a prerequisite. But the advanced one concentrates more on planning issues, not zoning issues. So for you guys, I would do the 101. 
Carmona is saying both, so I picked, I picked up. She wants to do <laughs> both. She's whispering. Well, I just read the itinerary. It's good information. It, it's good information, and if you're really curious, I suppose. Um, but Second for city board. folks, please let Tracy know if you're interested, and we need to get a head count. And we need to check our checking account to make sure there's enough money in there. But I think there will be enough. How soon in advance do we need to let you know? It normally takes us about two weeks, up a week and a half to get things going. So three weeks would be great. Uh, for us, really, by the end of March. Um, I don't know if registrations are going to fill up. I don't know if it's capping. Um, it's the regional planners at the RDC in our city that are hosting this. We are simply providing the facility. Um, and I don't know if they're going to cap it. This room holds a lot of people, but I don't know if they're going to cap it for 50 or 60. Uh, both we will probably have that many. They are promoting it all through Southern Georgia. So there will be people. It's not just for us locals. It's for all of South Georgia. Yeah, the last one they did here was what, like? Seven, eight, ten years ago. It's been several years since they've done one of these. Now, it, it was, we had Douglas, Waycross, Albany, Tifton, and it was all over. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and this is all day the late before? It's um, actually 8 30 to 3, I think, is the time frame. But it's pretty much the whole day. Yeah, it's yeah, 9 to 4. They'll probably end slightly earlier, but not by much. They'll provide lunch. Nine to four. On the schedule. Anything else? New business, old business, anything we need to discuss? One more thing from CSAP. We do have one person's um, tenure who is up for renewal if she wants to reapply. And Laverne, that's you. Your term date is in May. So if you're interested in serving again, then we'll need an application for use of any most recent volunteer. By the end of April, by the 28th or something of April. City Clerk's Office. Okay. Uh, Tracy can get there's an application form, there's a code of ethics, you have to do all that paperwork all over again. As if you were applying for the first time. Maybe I'll beat the cut. Cut your resume. And, yeah. You can't give me down as a reference. Are you interested in staying on the board? Then we will. I, I will get them to put a little blurb in there that because you have been on the board, we'd like you to continue to serve. Okay. Anything else? Your recommendation. <laughs> I thought that that's all you needed. Obviously, you need something in the chair. She's worried about the chair. Not health purpose. Oh. That's what she said. I'm tight with I'm tight with the mayor. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Staff. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention and service. We will see you next month. That was a 22 minute meeting. <laughs> that was a fast one. Yeah.